and uh, welcome to the webinar. My name is John Handler, Solutions Architect with the Cloud Search team. Uh, this morning we're going to be talking about relevance and ranking your results and getting the most out of your search results with Amazon Cloud Search. Just a couple of uh, housekeeping points quickly. Um, with, if you have questions, submit them in your GoToMeeting console. We'll come back to those questions and answer them at the end of the webinar. Uh, the recording of this webinar and slides will be posted and links will be emailed to all of the people who attended. So let's think about a typical search case. Um, somebody comes to a website and they're going to interact with a search engine and that person will have some kind of information need. The example I'm giving is somebody, a customer wants to come and buy some shoes. They would interact with the search box and type the terms that they're thinking of approximating what they want to find. In this case, type shoes. And this example pulled from Amazon.com we would receive a number of different search results. We have uh, Skechers. We receive a, a child's shoe. We might also get uh, women's shoes. And we even would get a shoe rack. And really when we look at it, if somebody comes to a site and they want to buy a product, the most important thing is to bring them the product that they have in mind or bring them something that um, would induce them to buy. So how we order our search results and what the user sees actually controls how well our site performs and how well we meet that user's need in searching. Today we're going to go over a lot of the pieces of the puzzle that go from the, the data that we're starting with and how do we get the good results out of that data. We're going to look a, just a very little bit at Amazon Cloud Search for those in the audience who are not familiar with it. And we'll talk through the processing of search queries so that you can understand clearly when the user types search terms or narrows with faceting, what happens to the query in the background, how are the documents pulled, and how are they presented, ordered to the user in the search results. We'll look at how they're matched. We'll do faceted drill down. We'll talk about text relevance and sorting results with good text relevance. And we have a lot of examples, and we'll, we'll go through it in, in good detail. So, you know, what is, the, what is the deal about search results? Well, as we went through in the initial example, the more you satisfy the user's search needs, the more they're going to interact with your product, the more they'll buy your products, and the more you'll retain those users. So generating good search results that meet people's needs will actually benefit both sales and retention of those users. I had an experience this weekend where I went to buy some socks for my kids, and I typed a number of terms into the search box, and I was actually unable to find the socks that I was looking for. After about 20 minutes of messing around with it, I said, you know what, this is not the site for me. I left that site, went to a different store, and found my socks that I was looking for, and made my purchase there. So it's critical that when people come with searches that we bring them the results that they're expecting because that helps them buy our product. More than that, search is becoming more central to the whole user experience. If we look at the web, we go to the search more often to find answers to the questions that we have. We interact with the search box frequently, and our experience of websites is more and more related to how we search and how well we search. On the desktop, the same thing is happening. Search boxes are becoming more prevalent in desktop applications, and especially in the mobile space, Search is even beginning to be a method of getting to the functionality of the application that we're interacting with. So search really is central to the whole user experience of your application. So bringing good search results means good uh, user experience, retention, and sales. We're going to dive into a little bit of an overview of Amazon Cloud Search now. 
And again, just for people who are not uh, familiar with Cloud Search in the audience. When you sign up for Cloud Search and when you get started, you create what, what we call a search domain. A search domain is the hardware and software that comprises a search engine in the cloud for you to interact with. It has several services that are deployed for you. First of them, of course, is a search service. This is a RESTful service that allows you to that you contact uh, via HTTP GET, and in the URL you would specify your search parameters. You can access it, as I said, directly through API, and we also have console interaction that allows you to perform test searches right out of the box. We have access control based on IP uh, white and blacklisting. Along with the search service, you will have a document service. This also is a RESTful service, again, provided to you via an HTTP endpoint. You would post documents to your document service endpoint, and you can add, update, or delete documents that are currently in your search index. The, doc the document service is available direct to API, and we have a suite of command line tools that also provide access to the document service as well as console interaction that allows you to upload documents to your search domain. Access control here uh, as well is provided by IP white and blacklisting. Along with these two services in your domain, oh, these uh, services are accessed DNS uh, through stable DNS entries, and we perform load balancing um, and all of the work in the background to scale your domain to handle the documents and searches that you're sending to it. Along with those two services, there's a configuration service that allows you, among other things, to create and delete domains, as well as tell Cloud Search how the fields in your documents should be indexed and the, the options that are applied to them. The config service is available, again, direct to API, and we have command line tools and console interaction that enable, uh, enable you to get to the config service. Here, the access control is provided through your AWS login. Okay, that's an overview uh, of Cloud Search, a little bit of overview on the search problem. So we're going to move into a little bit more depth about how queries are processed to help us get an overview of where we can interact with the search process to bring better results. So when a user enters a query, and this query could be uh, simple text, could have metadata uh, along with it, that query goes to what we call an inverted index. The inverted index maps terms to documents that contain those terms, just like a regular index. When the query is processed initially, we generate the set of all matches for that query based on the terms in the query, whether they're metadata or text, and we send that match logically through a filtering step where we can apply matches in metadata to filter down the total set of matches into a smaller set for eventually bringing through our ranking. Ranking is a separate computation. It's performed on every document, and we generate a score for all of those documents um, that are in the match set. After we compute the ranking, we then can sort, and there are a number of different ways that we can sort. We can sort by score or other ways. So these are sort of the four areas that we're going to look at in terms of how we can improve our search results. So just thinking about matching a little bit, um, when we look at the match from text to text, there are a number of steps that we perform on that text to bring it to a more canonical form so that things like case and, uh, and punctuation and other things don't distract us from the correct results. We if we take a query like the quick brown fox has jumped, we would first of all tokenize it, so we split out words based on either white space or punctuation separation. We would then downcase everything and we would apply a stemming algorithm. So in this case, we would take foxes and we would stem it to fox, jumped, and stem it to jump. We would apply synonyms. Synonyms are applied at index time. 
These are, t are words that we add to text in order to make additional matches. In this case, we would take, if we had synonyms for brown that were ochre, tan, and mud, we would add those at indexing time to that text. Okay. This is all applied to text type fields in Cloud Search. In addition, we have literal fields. These are atomic values. Text for these fields must be matched directly. Examples of these are IDs, user IDs, uh, ISBNs, and facet values. Within filtering, uh, we generally look at literal matching and numeric ranges. Again, filters are applied to reduce the match set. We, we mentioned ranking as a score computation for each document. And again, sorting can be based either on the rank computation, alphabetic, or numeric sorting. We're going to move into now a number of examples of search result tuning. And when we do that, we want to think about what is it that we mean when we say uh, a search result is relevant. Going back to our original example, a user comes to our system with a particular need that they're trying to fill. In the, in the first example we saw, the user was trying to buy some shoes. Potentially, they had a particular shoe in mind. And the documents that we return for their search would be more or less relevant as they matched the need for the user in buying those shoes. So there are a number of statistics that we can calculate. Um, but the overall point is that whether something is relevant is actually a human judgment. There's no statistic that we can calculate that absolutely states whether something is relevant. If I just type shoes, I have a particular need. And whether my need is met depends, most, depends more on that need than on an absolute criterion that we can apply. Even for all of these statistics, they are based on human judgment. So if we look at the two most common statistics are precision and recall. Precision measures how well, how many of the results we retrieved were relevant to the user's query. Recall measures of all of the documents that were rel relevant to the user's query, how many of them did we return. Uh, we have additional measures, mean reciprocal rank, which measures how well we ranked the results, and the discounted cumulative gain, which measures, which scores our results based on how well we brought relevant stuff up in the results. Again, the larger point here is that human judgment is required to determine whether something is relevant or not. Um, so as we look at search results, and as you look at your search results, it's important that you trust yourself and know that you have to make those judgments about whether your results are good or not. As we move into examples, uh, we're going to work with a data set, which is a small set of movies um, based on an IMDb uh, data set. This data set is available in the console. Um, you can create domains with this data, and there's a configuration supplied for you. So as we work through the examples, uh, you'll be able to create your own domains and, and work on these examples yourself. Within this data set, we have a number of different fields. We have, so these are, all, these are all films. We have the title of the film, all of the actors in the film, the directors of the film, a genre, which can be a single or multiple genre for the film, and the year the film was released. This is our source data. If we look at it in source format, uh, I'm showing you here a small example of what we call SDF, or search data format. Search data format is a little bit of syntax that we apply to our source data, can be in either JSON or XML. And this is a, an example of a single document. You would batch multiples of this, these documents to send them to the document service. Within uh, each document, we have a type. Here the type can be add or delete. If we add an existing document, then that would update the values in that document um, with new values that we send. Along with the type, we have an ID, which is a globally unique 
identifier for this document, and a version, Cloud Search will serve the highest version number of any document, of the document, um, in an eventually consistent manner. We have a language. English is currently the only supported language for Cloud Search. And then we have a set of fields. Within our fields, as we can see, we have title, director, year, genre, and actor. And then our data itself is the values for those, those fields. This is an example of Star Trek Insurrection. As you can see, values can either be single or multiple. Genre and actra, actor are both multiple value uh, fields. So this is how the data looks when you send it to Cloud Search. Okay, we're going to go through a quick example on matching. Now matching is really the basis for all of the search results that we're going to see. And it's, it's very important that we get the correct document into the match because if we don't actually match the document, then we won't be able to rank or sort it or bring it to the top. We talked about text fields. Text fields allow you to do full text matching. So a query like rolling would match the, the, the document, a document that contained rolling stones. Well, star would match a document that contains Star Trek. Um, and we also have literal fields where you must match the entire field exactly. So for Star Trek ins Insurrection, star would not match that field. Finally, we can do numeric range matching. So if we have years, we can match exactly the year 1978, or we can match 1970 through 1980. So a funny little fact about Johnny Depp that maybe people don't know is that when Johnny Depp travels, he actually uses a number of pseudonyms uh, in hotels so that the paparazzi don't find him. One of those, and some of those pseudonyms have become uh, famous, and he's, he's actually known by some of them. One of them is actually Oprah Noodle Mantra. Um, so if we imagine a user is coming to our movie database, and they want to find movies by Johnny Depp, but they actually have only heard this name, Oprah Noodle Mantra. Who is that? They don't know. If we search for Oprah Noodle Mantra, and I've, I'm showing here the URL so that we can get an idea of how that happens. Uh, within our URL, we send HTTP, and then we use our search endpoint, which Cloud Search gives us. And then the, the path is specified as the API version, in this case 2011.0201, as well as the search um, path, and then our search parameters. In this case, we use Q equals, Oprah Noodle Mantra. Um, that is, Q equals matches against all text fields in the domain. We also would be able to specify other search parameters using standard URL syntax with ampersand and add our other parameters. Well, if we search for Oprah Noodle Mantra, not surprisingly, we get no results. So how can we solve this? Why do we get no results? Because Oprah and Noodle Mantra, Oprah may be in our source data, but Noodle Mantra almost certainly is not. So what we can do is define synonyms mapping the term depth to Oprah and Noodle Mantra. We can do this in our console, again, or direct to API. I've got a screenshot of the console here where I've defined Noodle Mantra and Oprah as synonyms for depth. When we re-index our documents, both of those terms will be added everywhere the term depth appears. Now, if we search for Oprah Noodle Mantra, we can see we retrieve 38 results, including, I've, I've given a quick screenshot here of four of the, the top four results. Um, on the left, we have the title of the movie, and on the right, we have actors and genres. So here we can see all of these are Johnny Depp movies. There are some other places that we can intervene to bring more matches um, for our users. So Oprah Noodle Mantra may be a somewhat silly example, but in fact, there are a number of examples that make a lot more sense. In my search this past weekend, I was searching for kids' socks. And there are a number of synonyms for kids that make sense in a, a department store contact, like youth or child or children, et cetera. So adding those terms will help people find the documents that are, um, that are in the right place. 
Brands are another typical place where you might want to think about adding synonyms. Um, this would allow you to make sure that all of the, the clothing or shoes that belong to a brand all come together under the same terms. We mentioned stemming. Stemming is another way that we ensure that the user's terms can match correctly to our documents. So in this case, I've shown clothing. So both clothing and clothes will be stemmed in user queries and in the index to the single, st could be stemmed to the single stem cloth. In, in this case, anybody searching for clothing would find everything with either clothing or clothes, and anybody searching for clothes would find everything for either clothing or clothes. You can set your stems in your Cloud Search Console as well as through API. Finally, we have stop words. Stop words are a way of actually removing confusing matches. When we have common low value terms like uh, A, AN, or THE, these terms will not actually allow us to match documents that matter for the user. So stop words allow us to remove those terms from the index and from the user query, leaving us with um, a simpler query that's more likely to match the correct document. So we're going to move from matching now into the filtering realm, and we're going to step through an example of faceted drill down. Search facets are generally provided on the screen, and what they report is a count for how many documents have a particular attribute, how many documents that were matched have a particular attribute. So if I was searching for a movie, and I know it's a Will Smith movie, and I don't remember the title, so I could try to search for Will Smith. If I do that, I'd find 34 results, and Bad Boys, Ali, Pursuit of Happiness, I Am Legend, my Hancock does not actually appear in the top results anywhere. Along with my search results, I might also provide some facets. So facets can be retrieved along with search results out of Cloud Search and then displayed to the user in a format somewhat as I'm showing. Here we have facets for action films, comedy films, drama, sci-fi, etc. We might also show facets for year. Um, so we might list out all of the years that matching films have, and these are sorted again by the count of matches. So as a user, if I type Will Smith, I may think to myself, well, I know that that was a sci-fi film, and I think it was fairly recent, so I might click on sci-fi, I might click on 2008. If we look at what the query comes out from that, those clicks, it would look something like this. Here we're using a BQ query, and a BQ query is, allows us to mix Boolean combinations of different expressions. In this case, we're using the terms Will Smith. We've added the genre, sci-fi, and we've added the year, 2008. If we run this, this query, we find one result, and it is Hancock. So the round trip there looks like in our search, our initial search, we pull facets for year and genre, and then we present those to the user. When the user clicks on them, we create queries which provide values for those fields that we want to narrow our search results. There's a lot of different areas where filtering allows us to narrow search results and provide users with more relevant items. As we saw in this example, we used years, but we can also use year ranges. Here we're, we're specifying a year value that is 1994, 1995, or the range 2000, 2005, or the range 2009 and greater. Another typical place to filter is with prices. Often we'll want to allow our users to filter down to items that are within 10 to $20, say. In stock status is another great uh, filter that we can allow, that we can provide, so that users can only see search results for items that are in stock. Obviously, they're gonna be more likely to wanna buy those. We can also use filter, filters to segregate data sets. If our website has both DVD and book contents on it, we can allow our users to restrict their searches either to books or DVDs based on a type field that we provide for each of our documents. And a final example would be access control based on a user's um, ID. So 
for some use cases, you would want users to have access to certain documents and not have access to other documents. Typically, we would create groups and put those group IDs onto the documents themselves. As user queries come in, we would pass their groups along with the query to filter out groups that they don't belong to. Okay, we're going to move from filtering into ranking now, and we're going to talk about the text relevance function that Cloud Search provides out of the box. Text relevance is a measure from the user's query where they've provided text terms to text that we have in our documents, and typically this is free text. So uh, if we have descriptions or titles, we want to know how relevant is that each document based on what is the user's query terms. Now there are a couple of different uh, measures that we provide. The first one is called TF-IDF. Uh, people on the phone who are familiar with search will be very familiar with this one. What this measures is how unique is each of the query terms with respect to the corpus. Is, is the user typing a term which is very unique or is it very common? And it also measures how often does that term match in the document. So we look at, uh, we get a higher score when user query terms are very unique across the corpus and there are many matches within a particular document. The second component of the text relevance function is a proximity component. And what we're looking at there is how many of the user's terms matched and how close together were those matches. So if more terms appear in a particular document or and those terms are closer together and they're in order, we would score the most. Okay, we're going to move into an example of text relevance now. So if I'm thinking about Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, I might come to my search box and I might type Harry. If I do that, I get a number of responses, 179 results, including Prisoner of Azkaban, which is nice. But then we have a number of other, a number of other movies which are um, a little bit confusing, Dragnet, Top Secret, Guys and Dolls. And these are coming up because of matches in the actor field. So we can look at creating what we call a rank expression. And this allows us to mix both the text relevance as well as other fields that we have in our document in an algebraic way to provide a score for that document. It allows us to augment the text relevance really with uh, more information. So one, one kind of rank expression that's useful is a recency-based uh, rank expression. What we try to do here is we try to say, well, if we have a year, what we'd like to know is what are the more recent, um, what are the more, more recent documents that matched? In this case, because we're looking for Deathly Hallows, that's a more recent movie. We'd like to see that one move up in the ranking. I've shown a, a small piece of the console here just to give you a feel for how you define a rank expression in Cloud Search. You give it a name. In this case, I've called it recency. And then you type an expression. Here I've done, I've used the text relevance, and then I've added my recency component. And if we look at that, we have the age with respect to the newest document in the, set, in the system, so 2012 minus year. This will increase as the documents that match it get older. We then take the inverse of that and multiply by 100. So this would give us the highest score for the most recent document. We add that into the text relevance, and that will boost documents that match higher up in the ranking. When we apply that, we see Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows does indeed come to the top. And we have a couple of other Harry Potters jump up, which is good. And we also have more recent documents popping up um, in the ranking. What I'd also like to point out here is we can see the effect of adding in the recency. The text relevance scores for these documents documents are now a little bit more mixed. So we're not sorting strictly based on text relevance. We have added in this recency component. Cloud Search, we've recently released a feature that allows you to define rank expressions right along with your query. If we think back to the query URL, 
we can add a URL parameter where we specify a rank expression. Here with the rank dash name uh, URL parameter equals, and then we just put our rank expression right into the query itself. Once we've done that, we can add a rank equals parameter to the query to rank by that parameter. So we can do this through the console and that gets applied to the domain, or we can actually define this, ver this same rank function in the URL as we send the query itself. Now that has a number of other uses. Among them are A-B testing. This allows us to very easily create different rank functions uh, allow different users exposure to those functions and compare their behavior when they get those results. We can also use uh, query time rank expressions to do user customized searches. As I'm looking at a particular user, I may know that this user prefers a particular brand. So I might actually pass in that brand or pass in an additional value for that brand that allows those, those results to get boosted higher. And finally, we can use this to do geo-based searching and sorting. We can embed the user's latitude and longitude in the query in, inside of the distance function that gets calculated for each document uh, that's returned and sort on that rank function. So coming back to our example, we're going to look at uh, another feature that we've recently released, which is called field-weighted relevance. This allows us to weight the value of different fields differently in the text relevance calculation. And we'd use this where we have some fields that are more important. For instance, in a movie database, we know that the title matches are going to be likely more important than matches in a description or in an actor. And we can also allow data fields that are cleaner or that are generated internally as opposed to user generated to have more weight in the text relevance calculation. There's a little bit of a complicated syntax, but I'll go through it. So without any parameters in it, it looks like cs.textRelevance. And then we specify a weights object, which gives us the weighting for each of the fields. And we can also specify a default weight for fields that are not mentioned in the weights field. Drilling into the weights themselves, we specify a field name and a weight value for that field. And for our search, we're going to weight the title at four, four times, uh, and the actor at one quarter. This will adjust our overall score so that matches in the title count four times as much, actually, what is it, eight times as much, nope, 32. <laughs> I can't do the math uh, off the top of my head, but much more than actor. We can also, it, within the rank expression, similarly mix in other functions. So here I've put our recency function. We can create an overall score rank expression that contains both the text, weighted text relevance and the recency component to, and allow us to sort by that. If we do that, we can see that we generate all of the Harry Potter results and again, sorted in year order. So there's a couple of lessons to take out of the uh, ranking uh, discussion. The first is that text relevance only goes so far. And where we have documents that have a number of similar terms in them and look fairly similar, those documents will score similarly. And the, the text relevance itself cannot discriminate past a certain point. So we need other sources of relevance that we can use to create rank expressions to augment and aid our ranking. Typical examples of these uh, other sources of relevance are user behavior. So if we know that for a certain document it gets clicked on a lot or we know that uh, people buy this particular product a lot, we can add a score to our source documents that allows us to boost that document uh, in the ranking. Other common sources of relevance are link structure. If we know a document gets linked to quite a bit, uh, we can provide that information in the source documents and, and rank based on that. Document quality is another big area uh, where you have users of the system creating content. Frequently that content is either spammy or may not be of such high quality. You can choose to downweight those uh, against 
fields that you created yourself, and authoritative sources also uh, in a user context. If you know on a forum, for instance, if somebody is a, a, a you know a frequent contributor or gets quoted a lot, you can then identify that user as a an authoritative source of information, and you can mark their documents or add a score for their documents that uh, brings them up in the ranking. And of course, removing spammy content will also help to improve ranking. So we're going to move from ranking now into sorting, and we're going to come back to our Harry Potter example. And if I, again, if I search for Harry, um, I can sort not only by the text relevance or rank expressions, I can sort directly by fields on my document. I can choose to sort by year, I can choose to sort by alphabetically by text fields, and I do this by specifying the query parameter rank equals. In this case, I've said negative year. Uh, the, the default sort order is ascending. Negating it provides me a descending sort. So rank equals negative year will sort all of my search results for Harry descending by year. And we can see here again, Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows pops up as well as a couple of other 2011 matches. So that's an overview of the way the queries are processed, where you can interact with them, how you can, um, how you can affect the ranking. When you initially deploy your data into Cloud Search, you're going to want to do some tuning. And the way to approach that is, first of all, to identify either through logs or through understanding the application and the domain, what are going to be the top queries. And it's important to generate a list of top queries that you can actually use to tune. Um, you also need to take some, if you have logs, some random queries out of the long tail to make sure that everything looks good there as well. Starting with that list of queries, then you can also look at um, what documents are converting, where, where are their click-throughs. You can look at logs for full user sessions to understand somebody first searched for shoes and then they searched for women's shoes or they added filters. Um, and you can use that behavior to inform how you should tune the results so that the more relevant items come to the top. You can, of course, do A-B testing. So this allows you to deploy different weightings that, that and test them against uh, the, your user base and find out which ones are performing better in terms of any metrics you, that make sense, like click-throughs or conversion. And finally, you do want to look at your logs to understand what are people searching for and uh, make sure that you're covering all of those bases. I am going to take a small risk and um, preview something that we are going to be releasing in short order. And if I can get GoToMeeting to cooperate with me, oops. So let's just try squishing. What we're looking at here is our Cloud Search console. On the left of the console, I have all of my Cloud Search domains. And in this case, I have my uh, IMDB domain. This one is the one where I had my synonyms defined. As we use our dashboard, it'll, it shows us sort of an overview of our search domain. I have 5,000 documents, six index fields, currently running on one instance with one partition, and I'm running on a small instance. And here we can see these are the endpoints that Cloud Search provides me that I would put into my URL um, to do my searches. We are within, within Cloud Search, as I mentioned, we have a uh, search interface. Here I can type a quick query like Harry met Sally. And I can see I have my results. Now, these results are not actually ideal. I have Tideland, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans, and Harry Met Sally at the bottom. My intuition here is that Harry Met Sally should be higher up in the rank. And what's happening is I have all of these other films have Harry or and Sally in the actor field, and that's actually interfering with the Harry and Sally in the title. 
I can come over to my compare rank expressions, and this is, as I mentioned, a feature that we are uh, just previewing today, but will be releasing soon, and I can click over to here. What I get here is a comparison between one rank expression and a second rank expression. If I type my search terms, Harry and Sally, you can see I have identical results because I haven't yet changed anything. If I want to do field weighting, I can come to my field weights dropdown and it shows me all of the text fields in my domain. I can choose title and I can increase my title weight there that Harry met Sally then pops up to the top. Here with full tool again allows you to play with the, um, the results as they come out. If we take a little bit more complicated query, query, we take our Harry example. Here we can see uh, all of our matches for Harry. Oh, I already have my rank expression in there, so I have to I have to reset. Um, here, let me just pop over to a separate window. Nope, let me pop over to a separate window. All right, well, that's not working out for me. Well, we can, we can actually take out our, we can drop our title back to one and remove this piece. Okay, so now we're back to our default ranking. If we, again, work with our actor and drop our actor down so that Harry does not match in the actor field, we can see Harry Potter results start to bubble up in the ranking. On the right side we see uh, some icons that indicate the change in position of these documents with respect to the second rank expression. You can use these, you can use this panel to deploy this search expression to your domain and continue to use it. Or, or use it query time also. Or query time also. So we're just going to talk a little bit about debugging search results. And the most important thing about debugging search results is to find the document itself. Seems like an obvious uh, point, but more often than not, either some piece of text is missing off the source document or the source document is not actually in the index. So the first thing to do when something is not coming up in the ranking is to check back with the source itself and make sure that document exists and then search with more text and more and exact phrases to make sure that you can actually match that document. Um, again, checking as well for filter values, what's the filter on the search, and increasing pagination can also help uh, to reveal more results. So the first step in debugging a result is identify what is the result that you expect to see and make sure that's actually matching. Then you can use return fields for both text relevance and rank expressions to display the score that each document is getting. This will allow you to compare the actual document score with other scores in the search results and do a little bit of thinking about, well, what are the terms that are matching? Why is it scoring the way that it's scoring? And that will give you a clue as to what you should tune both for field weights and for rank expressions to bring that document higher uh, in the results. And again, matching, very, very critical. Um, look at the text options, stem, stop words, and synonyms. A uh, favorite sort of example here is the the, which is the name of a band, and uh, gives search engines quite a bit of problems. Um, here you have to make sure that you have some synonyms or something that's going to bring this, this actual band into the search results themselves in order to be able to rank them. So a little bit of a recap. Um, we started off, you know, good results are 
central to your user's experience. And your good results will get results in terms of retention, in terms of sales, and in terms of good user experience. We talked through tuning in the, in the realms of matching, filtering, ranking, and sorting, and saw how we could add synonyms, how we could provide faceted drill down, how we could adjust the rank scores for our documents, and how we could do sorting in different ways to bring the results that users expect to see into the top of the search results. Uh, we talked about improving document quality to improve matching, how you add filters to narrow results, rank expressions, how you tune them, and where to, how to put emphasis where the users want to have it in the search results. I want to bring up uh, right now Cloud Search has available a free trial. This is uh, 30 days free usage for new users of Cloud Search. This uh, allows you to get started right now. And again, the data set and all of this is available in the, in the Cloud Search console. You'll be able to create a domain and try out all of the things that I did today for you. I uh, also want to point at some resources. We have a, the Amazon Cloud Search overview page, including uh, FAQs, forums, documentation, articles, a lot of information about how to get started, and we, including also some demos and tutorials. All right, I'm going to open it up for Q&A right now. And again, if you have questions, uh, please send them in via the, uh, via the control panel. Um, so looking at questions here, um, will Access Control eventually get full IAM integration? Um, into authentication via keys would be a, a better solution. So this is, a, a, again, a very, very highly requested feature. Um, we are looking at the security model overall and looking at IAM integration. Um, we don't have any announcements on that front, but that is a, a very important feature, and we hear that request quite a bit. Um, I'm in Brazil. When will Cloud Search be available in the Brazil region? Uh, Cloud Search, you know, as an AWS service, uh, we, of course, are looking to roll out uh, to all of the AWS regions. I'm not able to give a, a roadmap or any exact dates when this will be happening, but a very high priority item for us to be able to serve customers in other AWS regions. A question on language. You said English was the only language supported. What is this language used for, and when will other languages be supported, i.e. German? The language is currently, yes, English is the only supported language. <coughs> The effect of the language, uh, expressed, the language is expressed within the search document. So, um, and it controls the language options that we talked about, the stemming, stop words, and synonyms. Cloud Search supports the full Unicode character set minus some characters which are uh, invalid XML. And within the full Uni Unicode character set, tokenizing will work correctly, matching will work correctly. However, the, sorry, I, shouldn't, I should say tokenization will work correctly for white space, uh, white space languages. For languages like German where there's a more complicated uh, segmentation question, you can pre-tokenize those, those pieces of text and provide them to Cloud Search already in tokens. Um, we are, again, as we are looking to uh, roll out to other regions, we are also very keen on rolling out additional languages to support those natively um, for stemming and stop words and synonyms. Uh, question on, is there a way to just upload the document automatically or do I have to extract a document and construct a JSON then send it to the service? A uh, little bit of a, a combined answer here. Within the console and within the command line tools, we do have the capability for you to upload, say, a PDF or a Word file and um, have the text automatically extracted from that and provided as a single field on your document. This is somewhat of a developmental feature right now. We're not 100% uh, supporting it, but it will work most of the time. Uh, apart from that, 
you would, generally speaking, want to construct uh, an SDF document with your own metadata and your own fields to augment that document to make the matching better. <coughs> Okay, another question. Are there default synonym stems or stop words for cloud search domains? Um, there are default um, stop words provided. There's a default list that comes up in the console. In terms of synonyms and, um, oh, and sorry, there is a default stemming algorithm that's applied, which is a, a, a sort of simple remove plurals kind of stemming algorithm. For more complicated stemming, uh, you would need to provide stems yourself. And with synonyms, again, Cloud Search is a, a cross verticals, so it's a little bit difficult to define a default synonym list that would work across many of these, these verticals. So there is no default synonym dictionary. That would be something you would supply for your application. I uh, have a question on, there's a musical band named The The. I think we, uh, we covered that one. You'd have to either work with synonyms or uh, find a different way to bring up some other field in that document and uh, match it that way. Will the command line tools be updated to allow complex ranking, ranking expressions, for example, using the ternary operator? Currently, this operator is not supported in the CLTs. Uh, that's a good request. I don't think we've heard that one. We do continue to iterate on the command line tools as we bring out new features. And um, as these features come out, we'll be releasing updates to the command line tools where we don't support something like relative field weighting or uh, we'll, we'll be rolling support for that into the command line tools. Is there a plan to update the AWS Java SDK to support searching and to add new documents to the search index? If so, can you share the timeline? So first answer, um, there, the, we don't have an SDK for adding documents. We do have command line tools support. So you can script the command line tools. Not exactly the same thing. Um, in terms of searching, and, and for both of these, because it's a RESTful interaction and because really it's just talking to a URL, um, we haven't provided additional tools to do sort of the management of that communication. Um, there are some libraries out there in the open source community already. I believe there's a Java SDK um, that allows you to get to the search uh, endpoint. It's provided by Search Technologies, and you can Google for that. I believe we also have a Ruby SDK and a Python SDK uh, that people are working on. Again, this is all open source. I believe we, we do have interaction with Bodo. I don't know whether Bodo is a Python SDK. Uh, I'm not sure whether Bodo supports searching. I do think it supports document upload. Um, all right, uh, another question. Can I go beyond 100 facets? You need to have 500. Uh, a little bit of a confusion here. Let me answer it two different ways. The first way is, you can, uh, you can definitely have more than 500 values for a single field, 500, sorry, different values across the corpus for a single field. So if there were 500 different genres and they were scattered across my document, that would be completely okay. Within a Cloud Search document, I think this is what you're asking, uh, a single field can only have 100 values. Um, we are looking at having that limit raised however, not as high as 500. One way to approach that is to use, goes into, um, you know, facet fields one, facet fields two, facet fields three. Uh, not a great workaround. The other thing to do is to think about the use case. Maybe there's a way to partition up those different 500 different facets uh, in a way that makes a little bit more sense to make them more hierarchical or do something like that. Okay, question, do you support partial word matching? Will other match another? We do support um, prefix-based wildcard matching. So 
specifically, other will not match another, but uh, other will match O-T-H-E star. Um, so you can you can supply a wildcard, but it is a prefix a prefix based wildcard. Uh, okay. Uh, does CS support decimal matching? Um, how to sort or show the price field in decimal point? As you've no doubt noticed, uh, Cloud Search supports uint only. Um, Typically, the way you would handle floating point numbers, and especially for prices, is you would multiply uh, the prices by 100 going into the index and, um, and in queries. And then in the UI, you would divide before you displayed, divide by 100 before you displayed that value to the user. This works for numbers out to a certain level of precision. Do you have autocomplete? Um, we currently do not have an autocomplete feature. You can work with prefix queries, as we were talking about, to do some basic autocompletion. Uh, you get some interference when stemming comes into play, but you can uh, use prefix-based queries to complete searches and provide those as autocomplete results. And we're also hearing quite a bit that people are looking for an autocomplete feature. So we'll be looking at uh, bringing that out sometime in the future. Ah. <clears throat> I'm not able to understand the log feature in tuning where to find the log. Cloud Search right now does not uh, provide a, a search side log. So when I was speaking about logs, um, what I was referring to is uh, capturing logs of users on the, on the web server side and examining those logs. Um, you should have HTTP access logs. You should have uh, other logs from your front end where wherever the queries are coming from, log those queries on, on your end and then uh, look through those logs. And uh, another question on that, good practice to scan search log. Do you provide an API or tool? Again, not, uh, not at the present time, although we are looking at providing more visibility into how people are, uh, how users are using the search domains. And uh, those are features that we're working on now. Um, is CS still considered in beta? Cloud Search right now is in what we call a public beta stage. This is a little bit different than um, what beta is considered in the software universe. Public beta does not mean that we are working, looking at a prototype. Public beta really refers to the availability of an SLA in terms of uptime and other guarantees like that. So Cloud Search right now is, is fully released to the public, and the designation of public beta really refers more to um, the level of SLA and the level of availability that we are guaranteeing. So any plans to add integration between DynamoDB and Cloud Search? Uh, these two products would work great hand in hand. Uh, uh, would the recent data pipeline be able to? Um, I wrote a paper which is currently available in the articles section of uh, the aws.amazon.com website. And um, that walks through an example of how to integrate between Cloud Search and DynamoDB. I think, uh, I think your instinct is right on. I think these two products do work great together. And uh, you know, as we consider that and we, we look at our product roadmap and try and roll out stuff that's going to be great for our users, we'll, we'll definitely keep that in mind. Uh, I am not familiar enough with data pipeline to say exactly how data pipeline could help with that, but I believe you're right. I, I believe data pipeline would be a, a good way to um, manage the data flow so that it gets to both Cloud Search and to Dynamo. I think that's about all we have time for right now. Um, I want to thank everybody very much for your attendance and your attention. Uh, you can have my email up there. Please feel free to drop me an email. 
and uh, be in contact with us. And again, thanks very much, everybody.